Good evening, everybody. Um, so tonight, the video I'm going to do is a um, large canvas, 30 by 30, with a deep edge. I think it's about two inches on the edge. Um, and I'm going to do the same pattern as I did last Sunday, which was the heart. The last Sunday's was on black background. This Sunday, obviously, as you can see, is on a white background. Um, how I set it up, because we did the video last night and showed you how to mix the paints, how to um, get them set and how to actually lay them onto the canvas. I've skipped that part of the, the actual video today because I'm obviously time's going to be tight and I don't want to you know take too long and obviously you know keep you hanging on with it. So I thought that was the best way to do it. So what I've done is prepped the canvas as I did last night with the tape underneath and the uh, pins underneath ready. Um, and, but before I started what I've done is I've laid out some tape so I've cornered each side of the canvas on the tape and then what I've done, because it's a 30 by 30, I measured 15 in the middle and then I've laid down on both sides um, a bit of tape. So when I poured the white over and I tilted the white so it covered the canvas, I could put it back into the same position. And what we're going to do, everybody said to me about the other heart, how do you manage to keep it so neat or how do you keep it so shaped? Um, it was because of the tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this point here as the centre top part of the heart and then I'm going to use this part down here which is level to that part in the middle as the bottom of the heart and then it's a case of just coming out from each side down to the middle. Um, with the actual heart itself, I'm, I'm going to say this now and I'm probably going to make myself look an idiot, um, but I you don't actually need to be too horrendously clever with pouring out the heart because like any form of medium or any form of painting this one probably is the, the, the most forgiving because if it's an oil painting you can lay down that shape it's stuck same with acrylic if you did it on a canvas um, same with oils whatever you do with this one you've got a second chance and a third chance to pull your shape around and when you've finished it you can blow the shapes whichever way you want to um, which will put, pull it back in line. So it's, it's, it's going to be okay because the paint moves, you're blowing the paint, you've got second, third, fourth chances to actually get your shape right as the painting goes along. And then when you get to the stage of blowing it out, if it's one side's a bit slight off on the other one, you just blow a little bit more on that. So that's the idea behind it. So what we're going to do, because this is a large canvas, um, and I'm pretty short on space, as you can probably see, um, and Carol's filming for me. We started off on this side so that I could just have a little chat. But what we're going to do is Carol's going to move round to the right hand side to me, and then I'm going to start here. And if I need to move round the canvas, I'm going to move round that side. So hopefully your vision of the canvas won't be blocked too much at each point. If that makes sense. Um, so that's where we're going to go. Colours. Um, when I first started this process, I used to work on four colours. I used to work on a main colour, an opposite colour, a colour which was similar to the main colour and a, and a metallic. But as time's gone on, um, I've realised that as you're actually painting, you get a feel for the actual painting as you're going along. Um, and sometimes your colour patterns are going to go out or you think I'm going to need something there. So I start with the basic colours that I've got. So um, as I said to you last night, when I've been telling everybody in the world this is teal, it's actually not, it's turquoise. So silly me. Um, so turquoise, which you'll know is one of my favourites, magenta, purple, this one here is uh, like a pink, but it's it's a pink base on purple, I thought it would go quite nice with that because we've got a pink here as well, so it's a bit in between them. And then the shocking lime green, they're the colours I'm going to start with. These are colours that I've put aside that at some point I may or may not use depending on how I feel the colours are going or how the painting's going. Uh, the black, I may use the black, because on the other one I use the white at the tip just to give it a bit of shape and in certain points just to make sure that you could get a feel, but I don't want to use too much black because obviously it's quite dominant. I've got a gold, which I don't particularly like using too much gold. Um, it tends to sometimes, if you're not careful, um, just be a bit muddy or a bit I don't know it just if you're not careful with it it can be it can be a bit overpowering so I might use a bit of that um, the orange 
which uh, I tend to use a lot now. I think about a month ago, I wouldn't have been seen dead with the orange on my hand, but because I've realized that if you don't actually line it and blow it, it's fine. Because if I did it into the actual pattern and blew it, it will react with these colors and it'll be muddy. So that I don't do. What I'll do is I'll blow the colors out and round. And then when I get to the stage that that's fine, I'm gonna use the straw, I'll drop sections of orange into it, which keeps the color of the orange really bright, really dominant. It doesn't work with the rest of them and make it too muddy. It's, it comes out quite bright. Uh, red, I'm not sure about red. I don't know if I'll use that tonight. I used it in the black one because it worked quite well with the black um, and tendency at the end to maybe use a bit of yellow just to give it a bit of definition. So I keep them separate out of the way at the end. And I'm gonna start with these. So that is it. So Carol's gonna move into position. <laughs> Is your heads off? Okay. So, I am a bit worried about this because it is quite large. Uh, the, the other one was uh, 30 by 24, this is 30 by 30. Uh, and there's a tendency to have to lean across it quite a lot. So I do apologise if I block your, your shot at any point. Um, what I'll do is I'll start off with a lighter colour. So I'll start with the pink. And what I'm going to do is head to the middle of that shape, come back down because I don't want the heart to go over. So come down to about here. Come to about there like that. And then again. I think that's not too bad. It's a little bit too high at that edge, but these are okay. Um, so my next colour. I can bring it a bit higher at the top. And magenta. these little flaps With the green, I don't want to put too much green in, so what I'll do is I'll pick spots in it. I don't want it to look too much like a, a vine or something like that. And then the blue. Now, so that's the shape. I can see this side here probably is, is at some stage needs to be a little bit more than that, but I can work on that as time goes on. So what I normally do now, I've got two options. I can blow this bit out, or I can start the process again. 